Hi everyone, this is Terry. With your software, you receive a manual that's called a Startup Reference Guide that gives you several great practical applications so you can follow step-by-step -step to create something with your software, which is well and good. But the problem with manuals like this is it doesn't explain the whys. So I'm taking an application that begins on page 48. It's called the heart pattern. And I want to explain the whys. The first thing that it told you to do when you open that pattern, and let me show you, you import from Outline Shapes event. And when you import this design, we'll just import it briefly. It is a filled shape. And what you do is you go through and apply line sew and region sew or sewing attributes to change the appearance of that heart. And you can see how dramatically it changes from one to the other. Let's delete the original. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to select the first row. And I drew a bounding box around that and I'll choose the selection arrow. Now the first thing I want to do is I want to well, let's first talk about color. One of the things, your color may be either in a list view, as you see here, or it could be in a palette mode, where you're, like if you're an artist, you're selecting from your palette. It just depends on what you want to use. I'll, I had it on the list view just to select the colors that were specified. I tend to leave it on the palette. Because when I'm at my machine, I'm going to choose whatever colors I want. But then the thing that I want to show you is let's go to sewing attributes. And let's look at the chain stitch, which was applied to the outside. The thing about chain stitch patterns is you can either have the stitch running to the left. And you can see the arrangement here. And if you look down in this box, this is where we're focusing on. Or you can have a, the stitch type running to the right under the arrangement. We'll go back to the left. Or you can choose to have it stitch out like a diamond pattern where it's intersecting. And we'll leave it uh, with the stitch type being the triangle shape. You can specify how many times it's going to stitch that design. So in this case, it's going to stitch it five times and you can see that down in the box at the bottom and also the size of the design. The next thing that you see is start end type, feed or run. If you go to your online manual and you type the word start end type, one of the things that you'll see is an example. I have a video that shows entry exit points, and in this case, the entry exit points, which are specified by L1, L2, are stacked on, on top of one another. So in the case of this motif stitch, it's going to stitch all the way around this design without stopping. But if you move that entry exit point, in this case, it will begin here where L1 is. It will stitch to, to the point where L2 is. And if you have the feed option selected, it will jump with a jump stitch back to one and continue sewing. If you have the option that is run, what will happen is it will sew all the way to this point. Then it will uh, create a running stitch back to one and continue sewing the design. So think about what those options mean and look it up in your online reference manual if you're uncertain what happens when you choose whether you want the feed or the run. So in this instance, if we watch this stitch out and it'll be the second, second color and we'll play it out. You can see that what it, it's doing, actually, it's finishing the first part of the decorative fill. So now it's stitching out, and we'll speed this up. You can, you can see that it's going to stitch all the way around that design, and because the entry exit points are at the same location. We'll go ahead and stop the player, and 
Now we'll look at the decorative fill. The decorative fill is a pattern that's selected and that pattern was pattern two. And the size is 50 millimeters. That was changed from the default. And then you can choose minimize feed. And if you choose to have minimize feed on, what will happen is it will stitch an outline around that shape. So let's just play it out and watch it play out. And as it finishes, you'll notice that it will stitch an outline around it. You can see the outline formed here. Let's stop this and we'll go back and change it to have the minimize feed off. And by the way, when I went through this exercise and did what I suggested that you might do, I realized with the chenille stitch that I created, this may be one way to avoid sewing the ends, and it is. So if you watch the chenille video, think about that. So you see it did not stitch the outline around this. But you need to sew some of these out because one option may be, depending on what you're doing, may be more preferable than the other. So we'll go back and we'll leave that minimize speed selected. You can change the stitch angle uh, of this design. You can change the run pitch, which is a stitch length. Or you can do what's called a random shift. Random shift will skew this design. If you look in the box, you can see that the design itself is skewed. Now, it might not be that noticeable in something that's this small. But if you have something that's larger, it will definitely make a difference. So now we'll select the next two options. And in the next two options, we'll look at uh, the stitch type that was selected is a candle wick stitch. And with a candle wick stitch, you can choose whether you want to have a dense stitch a medium density stitch or a light density stitch. You can also, excuse me, you can also change the size of it. So if you look down at the box in the bottom, if I increase the size of that candle wicking stitch is going to become rather large and it will be also rather dense and too big for this design. I'll go ahead and change that back to three millimeters. You can change the spacing. Again, if you look in the bottom, you'll see that you can change how far apart they're spaced. And I'll move it back to the one millimeter. And you can change the start end type. And again, this gets back to the feed run that we saw earlier when I showed you on the first selection. On region sew, so this is a pattern that is a stamp pattern. And it's a programmable fill pattern. And in the programmable fill, you will notice that down at the bottom there are stamps. And this means that it's like, more or less like embossing. So the pattern that was selected was stamp one, which is a heart. And you can see that the size of it was adjusted. You can change the angle. The offset, if you look down in the bottom box and we change the offset and we're looking at the rows, those patterns dance from left to right across the row. If we change it back to the default, they're back it lined up vertically and horizontally. If you change column and we'll change the percent, you'll notice that the columns themselves are shifting. And you can see how that affects the design. I'll go ahead and change it back to the default. Base sewing is basically an underlay. And one of the things you'll notice if you select the underlay is these hearts are really much more visible as far as how uh, they appear on the screen. What I would suggest that you do is you stitch them out. The instructions do not uh, include base sewing. And you notice that feathered edge is grayed out.
So now we'll go ahead and select the next two. This is the center of the design and the stitch type that was selected is a stem stitch. A stem stitch can either be one that has multiple stitches, meaning a backwards forward motion, or it can be just a single run. So you can choose one or, one or the other. You can change the start end type uh, as we, I showed you in the first example, the width of the stitch or the spacing of the stitch. So look in the box below and you can see as I adjust the width how it appears. And then if I change the spacing of it, you can see that basically it's like a zigzag stitch and it will change the appearance of it. The next thing we'll look at is the region so, and this is a motif pattern. And one thing you'll notice, it says pattern one only. I want to show you an example down here at the bottom. So let's select it. And this is another design. And what we'll need to do is we'll need to go to find the selected object zoom because I put this off on the side. If you notice on this, I have two patterns of motif stitches. So in this particular example, you'll see that on the region so I have pattern one and pattern two. This allows you to select two different patterns so that you can have a completely different look on your fill. Now, one of the things, if you'll notice, if we put pattern one only, you can see what that looks like. And pattern two only will be pattern two. And then pattern one and two will alternate those patterns. And that's just good to know. We'll go ahead and delete that. And now we'll go back and select the, the center of the heart. And while that's selected, we'll zoom in to, to it. And now we'll look at the inside of this heart. And the thing that I want to show you on this is that the outline stitch for this is the stem stitch that we already talked about. But on, on this pattern, you can change the alignment of it. So looking down in the box, you can have it all lined up on a singular row where it's uh, right side up or you can flip it upside down or you can alternate it. You can also arrange it so in the case of this it really isn't going to make any difference or not much difference because uh, it's symmetrical. You can change the vertical arrangement as well. You can change both the horizontal and vertical offset. In this example, it was offset about one millimeter, and that affects how the designs are lined up against one another vertically. So if, we, if you look down in the bottom, we'll go back to the default, and you can see that what the appearance would be if I change it. We'll go back and we'll increase this to one millimeter. And it's a very slight adjustment. You're really not going to notice too much in the shift, but what it does is it shifts the pattern. You can also change the horizontal and vertical spacing. And right now the vertical spacing is at minus six. Let's go back to the default. And what you'll see is that you have very few designs that are appearing. By changing it to a minus six, you have more of the pattern in this decorative fill. So you can change that both vertically and horizontally. Let's go back to the default and let's change the horizontal spacing. And you'll notice on the horizontal spacing what it's doing is it's moving that design out. So it's spreading it apart and that is not an appearance that I, that I want for this particular design, but if I change the, the vertical spacing back to that minus six, it may be a look that you like. 
uh, I, I'm going to change it back to the default so that I get more of that design and we'll move this down back to six. So this video basically gives you the why you're making those changes in the practical application. It's really important for you to understand as you make changes to the stitch types what the implications are. And sometimes it helps if you do go to your online manual and you look at those sections and, and read those sections. I'm a person that learns through videos from seeing more than I do from reading. Uh, as I've gotten older, I found out that it's harder for me to, to stay focused. So that's one of the reasons I record these videos. If you find this helpful, please let me know. And thank you for your time today. Please like and subscribe to my videos and share them with friends. Thank you and have a great day.